Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. As you see from the title today, we'll be doing KBSM Form 5 Chapter 1 or KSSM Form 4 Chapter 10. They are the same thing which is under lymphatic system. This is the part where people don't understand how does this thing work, where's the fluid from here, goes to there, and then the entire process. So I'll be doing some labeling question and the process, how they go, we turn back to the bloodstream, okay? Now, whenever we learn anything in biology, right, the first thing that you have to know is the labeling because labeling is very, very, very important. Now, we're going to start from the labeling first before we go through the process. So, this is a diagram that you have to understand. Okay, now, what is the important thing? What is the important labeling when it comes to the lymphatic system? It's only three labeling, okay? Three parts with three different fluid. So, the first part that we're going to learn is the blood capillary. So, blood capillary is the first part. Second part, we have the space over here. This space over here, we call it as a interstitial space or the inter cellular space. Interstitial space is for KBSM. Intercellular space is for the KSSM. Of course, the Form 5 Chapter 1, which is this year Form 5 student, you can actually follow the intercellular space as well because they are the same thing. So for, for KBSM student, right, you have to, so KSSM student, you have to follow the intercellular space, okay? The third part is the limb capillary. So this is number two, this is number three. Now, all of, after the labeling, right, we have to learn the fluid. Okay. Why you have to learn the fluid? Actually, the fluid, right, no matter where it is, right, what is it, right? All of them come from the blood capillary. Without the blood capillary, there is no fluid. So what is the fluid from the blood capillary known as? The fluid from the blood capillary, we call it as a blood plasma. Okay, It's known as a blood plasma. Interstitial space or intercellular space, right? The fluid is called tissue fluid or they call it as a inter Tissue fluid. So for tissue fluid is for KSSM. Interstitial fluid is for KBSM student. And then the inter the lymphatic capillary, the fluid is called limb. So limb interstitial fluid, they actually come from the blood plasma from the same place. Okay, after this labeling, we have to know. Among in the blood capillary, right, we have two endings. First, as you can see, we have arterial end. Second one, we have the venial end. What does the arterial, what does the venial means? Arterial means smaller version of artery. Venial means smaller version of vein. So this is arterial and venial. What's so special about the arterial end? Okay, at arterial end, it has the pressure. The pressure we call it as a hydrostatic pressure. This is the pressure, hydrostatic pressure. So at this one, they have a higher hydrostatic pressure. What causes this hydrostatic pressure to happen? It's because there is a change in the size of lumen. Because as I mentioned, my arterial is a smaller version of artery. From a larger lumen to a smaller lumen, right, there's a change in the pressure. Just like when you play a water pipe, uh, a, a bigger hole, right, the fluid, the, the water will flow like straight downwards. But if you press the hole into half, you can see that the water is moving forward very fast. So the smaller lumen, the pressure will be higher. This pressure causes all of the blood plasma, most of the blood plasma to diffuse into the space, okay? The space we call it as the interstitial space, as we mentioned, or the kind of intercellular space. Most of the fluid, why I say most, not all, is because that their treating cannot diffuse into the space, okay? Now, what are the three things cannot diffuse into it? Number one, there will be no erythrocytes, no blood plasma, and no platelets. Why these three things cannot diffuse into it? Because they are too large. In biology, we actually use large instead of big. So just write large, like no surface area. We will say large surface area instead of big surface area, right? So large is actually better for you to write than big. Okay, large, okay? Because they are too large, they cannot diffuse into, uh, into the space, okay? This is the first thing that you have to know. Now, all of the fluid, they stuck inside the space, right? Is it an advantage? No. Because if all of the fluid is stuck in the space, right, it will cause a disease called oedema. Oedema is like a water retention thing. It's called oedema. So to prevent oedema from happening, they have to return the fluid back to the blood shape. So how many percent return back? About 85 to 90 percent, it will be entered back to the venue end. So if the question asks you, what causes the fluid to return back? Okay, what causes, what causes the fluid to return back? You have to say, it's because at the venue end, the pressure is lower. It has a low hydrostatic pressure. That's why it will return back to the blood stream. It's not because you want to write prevent oedema. Okay, you have to say because it has a lower hydrostatic pressure. So remember, uh, they diffuse into the space is because they have a high hydrostatic pressure. They return back is because it has a low hydrostatic pressure. Okay, now 85 to 90 return back. How many percentage that you left? You left 10 to 15 percent, right? 10 to 15 percent, right? This 10 to 15 percent, it will diffuse into the limb capillary as a limb. So 
In a dim capillary, only 10 to 15% is the fluid. The rest, it will return back to the bloodstream already. Then you ask me, then why does the fluid have to go through the interstitial space? Because you know, it sounds very useless right over here. This interstitial fluid, or they call it as a tissue fluid, right? It has a function. What is the function? It's a space where the exchange of substances. What do they exchange? They exchange nutrients, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and waste product. So the tissue fluid is very important. Without this tissue fluid, there is no exchanging of substances between the blood capillary and the body cell. As you can see, blood capillary and body cell. That's why this tissue fluid is important. Is this part important? Yes, it's important. They will ask you to write the importance of the tissue fluid. So you have to remember this one. So just now we end at, well, we end at the limb capillary, right? Does this thing end here? No, it has a continuous process. Okay, so from limb capillary, they are connected to a thing called lymphatic vessel or they call it as a limb vessel. What is the difference between limb vessel and lymphatic vessel and the limb capillary? Capillary is smaller, vessel is larger. So this one here, this one here, as you can see, uh, these, these branches here, right, we call it as a limb capillary. As they connect together, right, as they connect together, you can see this entire thing here, we call it as the lymphatic vessel. So vessel is like a main branch, okay? The smaller one is like a smaller branch. It's a lymphatic capillary or limb capillary. Now, among along the lymphatic vessel, right, you have two important things. Number one, you have to know it has a thing called WAF. Okay, what is the function of WAF? We all know the function of WAF is to prevent backflow of blood right in the bloodstream. But because this is a lymphatic vessel, what I you can find in the lymphatic vessel is the limb. Okay, limb right. So it's to prevent backflow of the limb, not blood. Huh? If you write prevent backflow of blood, it's the wrong answer. If you do want to write prevent backflow of limb, you can also write to ensure the limb to flow in one direction. This is also something you can write because it's the same meaning. Okay, now, how do we want allow the limb to move inside our blood uh, 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 in the lymphatic vessel? It's actually true a few things. Number one is through the heartbeat. Okay, the other one is through the contraction of skeletal muscle, peristalsis of digestive tract, and inhalation and exhalation. So if you notice, right, everything here is related to muscle. So what does this thing mean? It means that whenever you are moving, you are trying to have a good circulation of blood, right? If you have a good circulation of blood, it means your lymphatic system also good. I think you all heard of it where people say that people who are bedridden means people who cannot move, right? Uh, after a few months or after a few weeks, you can see that there's a lot of water retention on the body. So it's very like, no, swollen. It's because that they have poor circulation of blood. If you have poor circulation of blood, it means that you have poor circulation of limb because they are together. So that's why whenever you are moving, doing exercise, moving around, you are trying to improve your blood circulation, you're also improving your lymphatic system as well. So it's very important for you to move. Like not, not only sitting now, moving around also the same thing. Okay, so this is how you actually move. Okay, okay. so this is the wow. Okay, uh, in exam, they will also ask you, how does, the, how does the limb move? So you have to know a few examples from the, the one here, the one in red color words, okay? Heartbeat, uh, contraction of muscle, uh, peristalsis. Uh, these are the things that you have to know. Uh, okay, next one. The first one is rough, right? What is the second part? The second part is the limb node. Limb node can be found in our underarm, our groin area, in the body. We have a lot of limb node. What is the main function of limb node, right? Limb node is to act as a body defense mechanism. What is the body defense mechanism? It means they have to kill the bacteria or the pathogen. Pathogen means the dangerous microorganism, the, harm, the harmful microorganism. So it contains of a thing called lymphocytes. Okay, what is the lymphocytes, guys? Uh, if you remember, we learned a thing called white blood cell. White blood cell called uh, leukocytes, right? Leukocytes have different types of white blood cell. This is one of the type of white blood cell we call it lymphocytes. Lymphocytes is the strongest white blood cell. Why would I call it as the strongest white blood cell? It's because they're able to produce antibodies. So, for example, when you are having fever or when you are having a sore throat or flu or whatever. So, lymphocytes will produce a specific antibodies to fight against the disease. So, they are very specific. So it's very important for you to have lymphocytes. So if you have no lymphocytes or you have no white blood cell, basically you, you will die quite fast like, in a way to see that. So it contains of lymphocytes. Not produce, uh, guys. It contains of lymphocytes. Because producing white blood cells, they're actually from the bone marrow or the, the thymus gland. Okay, These are the part where they produce, produce the white blood cell. So lymph node, they don't produce white blood cell. They only contains of lymphocytes that produce antibodies. So you have to take note over here. The other one, it contains of phagocytes. What is a phagocytes? Also a type of white blood cell. What is the example of phagocytes? We have neutrophil and monocyte. If you remember, we have this thing called neutrophil and monocyte. They are known as a phagocytes. 
What does a phago mean? Phago means eat. Site, it means cell. So it means it's a cell that eats. It's called phagosex. Not phag, guys. Okay, it's phagosex. Uh, a cell where they eat is called phagosex. Okay, so they will destroy the pathogen. Pathogen means harmful microorganism by a process called phagocytosis. It's the eating process. So the main thing from the lymph node is the body defense mechanism where they have lymphocytes and they have, they have the phagosex. So this is the important thing about the lymph node. Um, if you want to know whether you are healthy or not, you know, sometimes try to look into a mirror to see whether at the site below your ear, right, you have any part that is swollen or not. So if you notice that the one of the site is swollen, you can see that's lymph node. It's actually quite obvious. Huh? If you notice that there is a swollen part, you have to go to the doctor. Maybe you have you know, white blood cell cancer. And this white blood cell cancer is very common among the youngster. So you have to like, you no, know, checking yourself because I have students who get uh, lymphoma. It's a type of white blood cell cancer by looking into the mirror because you no know, girls are very concerned about their appearance, right? So when you notice that there is a changes below your below your ear, you can see there is a note. You can actually see the note. If you have no flu, no sickness, right? And it's swollen, it's, it's very dangerous already. But if you are sick, the lymph node is swollen, it's normal. Why? Because when you're sick, right? Your body trying to produce a lot of white blood cell, right? So if you're sick, it's swollen, it's totally fine but you're not sick and it's getting worse you could go and see a doctor because you might have lymphoma i'm not trying to scare you because it really happens in real life which among my students okay not all some of my friends also get so it's a very common uh, disease that people get now today so you have to really be careful because of your of your diet and also of your lifestyle okay so again now uh, among the lymphatic system we have the valve and the lymph node does it end at the lymphatic vessel no, okay, we're going to continue from the lymphatic vessel. From the lymphatic vessel, they will connect to this part called the lymphatic duct, okay? We have right lymphatic duct and thoracic duct. Thoracic, it means the left side. Lah. Can you write left lymphatic duct? Cannot, you have to write thoracic duct. So lymphatic duct, duct is a tube, it's like a whole thing. So it will allow it to move into the duct, it's a tube. From this lymphatic duct, it will enter to the subclavian vein. Where is your subclavian vein? Based on this name, right, subclavian. What does sub mean? Sub means below, behind and below. Lah. Okay, it's called sub. Behind, it's called sub. Clavian refers to your clavicle. Where is your clavicle? Your collarbone is called clavicle. So it's right, be right behind your clavicle, right behind your collarbone. We call it as a subclavian vein. So we have left and right side, lah, subclavian vein. So if you notice, right, can you see there's two color here? The one in green color and the one in orange color. The one in green color, they are under the lymphatic system. The one in orange color is under the blood circulatory system. As I mentioned, these two systems, they must work together. When you have a good blood flow, it means you have a good lymphatic flow. So it's very important for them to work together, okay? Right after thoracic duct, they will enter the subclavian vein. This is the vein that you have to you have to take note, okay? Now, from the subclavian vein, you will enter back to the heart because it's just right below your collarbone, right? Of course, you'll connect to the heart part through the vena cava, and then you will enter to the heart, to the artery, and then blood capillary. If you notice, it's a cycle over here. This is the cycle. Again, uh, start from the beginning, uh, okay? So, from the blood capillary, we have a fluid called Sorry guys, my phone lag for a while just now. So again, okay now, from the blood capillary, it will enter to the space. The space is called the intercellular space. So we call it as a tissue fluid and I enter to the lymphatic system, right? So from the lymphatic capillary, it enters to the vessel because capillary is a smaller one, vessel is the bigger one. It has a lymph node, it has a valve along the lymphatic vessel. From the lymphatic vessel, you enter to the left and right, the lymphatic duct, where the left side we call it as a thoracic duct. From the thoracic duct, it will be entered back to the bloodstream. And then subclavian vein, vena cava, heart artery, and blood capillary. So this entire thing, they must work together. Again, these two systems always work together. Okay, so they will ask you, what is the importance of the lymphatic system? See, just now we learned, right? Lymph node got white blood cell, right? This is the first thing. So whenever you think about lymphatic system, you have to think about the lymphocytes. So as you can see here, it says, act as a body defense because we have the lymphocytes that produce the antibodies, we have the phagocytes to carry out phagocytosis. Next one, you transport lipid-soluble substances. Then you'll wonder, how come over here got lipid-soluble substances? We never learn about lipid in this entire chapter here, right? This is under your chapter 9, where you learn a thing called villus. Okay, if you remember, this thing is the villus. Okay, let me draw for you to see, okay? So this cross thing is actually the blood capillary. And the one in the middle, we call it as a lacteal. This one here is the lymphatic 
vessel, okay, or lymphatic capillary also can, okay. Blood capillary is the one that transport and absorb water-soluble substances. Lacteal is to transport and absorb lipid-soluble substances. How to remember? Remember, lacteal, lipid, lymphatic system all starts from L. So from the lacteal, since it's lipid-soluble substances, right, it's fat, right, so they'll enter to the lymphatic vessel, so your limb is full with fats. So that's why it says it transport lipid soluble substances. What are the examples of lipid soluble substances? We have vitamin A, D, E, K, fatty acid, and glyceroid. So that's why you see it's one of the one of the importance over here. Because without the lymphatic vessel, we cannot transport lipid soluble substances. Okay. Next one is to complement the blood circulatory system because lymphatic system and the blood circulatory system they should work together as one. Without the blood circulatory system is not even complete. It's a cycle. The cycle will keep on repeating, repeating, and repeating. So it's important, important, it's importance of lymphatic system, important for your exam, obviously, yes. You have to know at least two of the importance in order for you to explain. Um, if you think which one is easier, lah, personally, I think defense mechanism and transport lipid soluble substances is easier to remember than the complements of the blood circulatory system. These two is more, it's more easier to remember, lah, actually. Okay. Next one. Uh, what are the disease related to the lymphatic system? So the first one, we have oedema. So what is the oedema? Oedema is a type of like a water retention thing. It's the accumulation of the tissue fluid because as I mentioned, right, the fluid has to return back to the blood stream 85 to 90% at the venial MRI due to a lower hydrostatic pressure. So if it didn't return back, it will cause the body tissue to be swollen. So it will affect the ankles, feet, legs, arm, eyes, or the entire body also can. So people who have oedema are usually bedridden patients. Why? Because bed rhythm patients, they don't move. If they don't move, you cannot see any good circulatory system. Okay? If there is no good circulatory system, then it means that the lymphatic system is not good as well. So how do we want to know that the person has the oedema? When you press on the body, right, you can see there's a thing called pitting. And you know what is gully? When you press on the thing, right, because we have a lot of pores on our skin, right, when you press, you can see the fluid coming out. The reason why I know, because last time I was a physiotherapist, so I work in the hospital, right? So I always treat patients with, with oedema. So whenever I press on the skin, right, you can actually see the fluid coming out. So if you ask me, what color is the fluid? Uh, how does it smell like? Actually, it's just like a, it's like a water. Okay, I think it's like a saliva because it's a bit sticky and then it's colorless. There's no smell for that. So you can see whenever you press, you can see there's water coming out. And if you only press on one hand and the other hand, you, you didn't press, right? You can see the right after effect. One is like smaller, one is bigger. There's a massage called lymphatic massage. Lymphatic massage is so effective. You know what is the difference between oedema and fat? Oedema is water retention. After you go for a massage or certain uh, physical activity, right, you can see an immediate change. Okay, But if you are fat, no matter how you go for massage, right, it's still the same. This is the difference between oedema and fat. Okay, So yeah, this is how people get oedema. Okay? So you can see there's a pitting and it will bounce back later on. So they will not bounce back immediately. Uh, it takes like a few seconds for them to bounce back. So every time you press, the water will come out. Okay. What are the causes? Uh, the first thing we have, uh, the causes is due to a parasites. This parasites is by a worm called the Rugia species, which is from the mosquito. So instead of the mosquito sucking your blood, this mosquito will lay the breed means there are eggs into your bloodstream and it forms into a worm, okay? This worm, it will stuck in your lymphatic vessel. This causes you to have a bad, a poor circulation of limb. So eventually, the leg was swollen. Usually happens to the leg, lah, okay? So that's why you can see the leg is very swollen. This disease we call it as a filariasis or we call it as elephantiasis also can. Both also correct filariasis or elephantiasis because it looks like elephant leg, lah, so that's why they call it elephantiasis. Can it happen to other parts of the body? The answer is yes. It can happen to the hand. It can happen at the groin area. Where is the groin area? Groin area is in between your knee. Let me show you. This part here is your groin area. Okay, this part here is your groin area. So it will be swollen over this part. Maybe this part, you can see there's a lot of limb node, right? So it will be swollen over here. And yes, as what you imagine, the balls will become large. So you have a larger balls, okay? People who have elephantiasis at the groin area, like a super huge super huge balls. I will not encourage you to Google it, but if you want, you can Google. Okay, I will not show you a diagram, but you can do that. Um, how you want to prevent this thing from happening, because usually people who have elephantiasis is because they stay at a very rural area, means very poor area. Uh, the prevention is you sleep in the aircraft room to make sure that there's a mosquito net to prevent it from 
to prevent the mosquito from biting you. So this is the thing that you have to take note or you can spray a mosquito repellent so that you don't get mosquito bite. So this mosquito bite, it will cause you to have elephant chassis, okay? The other one is pregnancy. People who are pregnant, they are... They have a lot of fluid compared to a normal human, so that's why they have oedema as well. So that's why they always complain that the legs is getting bigger and bigger, they cannot wear the shoes anymore. This is because of the oedema. And then big ridden patient also, the one as I mentioned, people who are big ridden, they cannot move right. So how do you want to prevent this thing from happening from big ridden patient? You can actually prevent oedema for people who cannot move. You have to do physical activity on them. It means you move their hands, you move their leg to make sure they have a good circulation or you just mix, make them from lying down to tilt the bit upwards. So if you tilt the bit upwards, right, it means that you have a better blood flow. So this is what people do in the hospital by the family member, by the nurse, or even by the physiotherapist to make sure that they have no oedema. Okay, and then the other one is deficiency of plasma protein. There's a thing called albumin. Um, these are the factors that it will cause a person to have oedema. So my suggestion is if you question, if, if you see in the question, right, that I did not mention any vector, means mosquito, right? You write oedema. If you see it's caused by a mosquito, you write the filariasis. It will be better. Usually it's these two questions only. Lah. A big reader patient also, you might see it. But these are the things that you will see in your exam. So we are done with the lymphatic system. So what are the questions that you usually see? Can let me teach you how to look at the question? Because if you are able to figure it out, what is the labeling, you'll be able to do the question already. Now, first of all, let's look at this question here. What you're going to find first, as I mentioned, right, three labeling and three different fluids. So first, can you see that as an arterial and venial? Arterial and venial. It means that this thing here is the blood capillary. So for E, this part here, we call it as a blood capillary. Can you see that as a space for D here? The space for D, right? Obviously, it means it's a space. This space here, we call it as a intercellular space, or you can write interstitial space. And then obviously, F is the last part, right? So F is the lymphatic vessel. Why is it vessel? Because it's the main branch, not the small, small thing here, not this one here. So it's the lymphatic vessel. So three different parts with three different fluids. Lymphatic vessel, we have lymph. And then blood capillary, we have blood, plasma. Intercellular space, we have the tissue fluid or the interstitial fluid. So if you know this part, obviously you know the answer. Why? Because at the arterial end, the pressure is higher. High hydrostatic pressure due to a change in the size of lumen. So it will force most of the fluid to diffuse into it. Okay. Besides red blood cell, besides platelets, besides plasma protein. Why? Because they are too large to diffuse into it. So how many percent it will be turned back to the blood stream? It will be 85. Okay. It will, yeah. it will be 85 to 90%. Why they return back to the bloodstream? Because it has a lower, it's over here actually, because they have a lower hydrostatic pressure, then they will return back to the bloodstream. So 10 to 15% of the fluid, it will enter to the lymphatic vessel as a limb. Usually they enter only, okay? They don't, they don't ask you to continue from the lymphatic vessel, they will enter to the thoracic duct, they will enter to the subclavian vein, they don't really ask you to explain that, unless it's an HA question. If it's an easy question, then you have to explain all the way back to the bloodstream. But if it's a structural question, you only have to mention until the formation of the limb only. So this is the most common question that you will see in your exam. So now that you know how to label, then obviously you will know how to form a sentence. So that's why I say labeling is so important. Okay, so this is it. Hopefully that like, you understand lymphatic system already. Any question, you can ask me or you can comment below or you can just find my Instagram. You can ask me a question there. If you shy, shy, you want to let people know who you are, you can always DM me, okay? So thank you for watching the video. Remember, subscribe my channel, like and share. Bye guys, see you guys next time.